help our viewers to understand uh, a little bit about this, uh, this government, for lack of a better term, and why it is that they wouldn't immediately turn this man over? Well, you're looking at a military dictatorship very similar to Pakistan's. The Taliban don't control Afghanistan. They control the southern part, and they are a warring faction that is in power. But in terms of being able to go to bin Laden, who has his own military people and has his own sense of security, uh, they really can't go to him and just hand him over. Secondly, uh, we can't even hand over Eric Rudolph if somebody asked for him. So it's a very wild, rugged place, and it's not as easy as we think it is for people just to hand over uh, large groups of armed people, even one person. Wild and rugged is, is something the Soviets uh, obviously, uh, obviously found was more than they could handle. Is it, would you anticipate that we might find the same? Give us an idea of the topography there. Well, it's an extraordinary landscape. I mean, uh, it has defeated almost every army that tried to conquer it. The, even the word Hindu Kush means killer of Hindus. Uh, it's full of rocky, sort of narrow gorges that are perfect ambush spots. Uh, there's vast wastelands of uh, just landmine-littered uh, deserts and mountains and steep cliffs and caves. It's not the kind of place you would want to deploy ground troops into. Uh, when the Soviets went in there, though, they tried to occupy the country. I don't think we're going to go in and try to hold land. But the other problem we have is, what is a Talib? As soon as a Talib drops his rifle, they look just like everybody else. So it's not going to be a clear-cut battle. President Bush seemed to identify quite clearly who the enemy is last night, but seeing that enemy is a much more difficult process, isn't it, and won't it be? Right. I think you're seeing now, as reporters go to the region, they suddenly realize that the bond between Pakistan and, Talis and, and Afghanistan is ethnic, not geographic, that we are in the middle of a hotbed. Our ally are the people that run those terrorist camps, and the people that are protesting are ethnically related to the southern Talibs. How the, this network of terrorists about whom we've been speaking and clearly whom we're, we're about to start to target, uh, they, they don't really have ties uh, aside from ideological, do they? I mean, it's not as if they're all hanging out in a meeting place that we can just go blow up. No, if you consider the internet, you have these nodes of cells. Each has their own cause. They might be in Algeria, they might be in Miami, they might be in London. Uh, they all share information and finances through a sort of a large charitable network of Islamic organizations and individuals. Most of those individuals, by the way, are centered in the Gulf. Uh, another one of our allies that is helping us to fight this problem. But once you take out one node, and let's say bin Laden is one of those nodes, there's plenty of other people that will spring up to take his place. He did an, Osama bin Laden did an interview with ABC's John Miller and said, leave Saudi Arabia or die. Allah ordered us in this region to purify the Muslim land of all non-believers and especially the Arabian Peninsula. We believe that the biggest thieves in the world and the terrorists are the Americans. We do not differentiate between those who dressed in military uniforms and civilians. They are all targets of this fatwa. How do you fight against that? Well, two things. One, bin Laden is one person. I mean, here, here's a hothead who is angry at the country that kicked him out. So let's not make the guy, you know, a deity. Yeah. Secondly, uh, the Saudi government is a fundamentalist group. I mean, the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia are more hardcore than some of the Talibs. So I think we need to, to sit back and have a perspective on what we're doing here and who we're dealing with. There, there's been a suggestion that we need some sort of propaganda campaign, much like the one that's been waged there uh, for decades, if not centuries. Is there a way to sort of break that Break that thought of West as evil, West as Satan? Yes. First of all, we should brand what happened last week as a criminal act, not as an act of war. We don't know who did this, and we are linking this to religion and geography. We should not do that. Secondly, we have 250 million people who are quite intelligent, very educated, who can be combined into a force as opposed to kept as sort of a, a, a rabble that gets excited when we make speeches. I think the American people want to know more information. President Bush said last night that we will be able to see some of what happens. We will not even know about the successes of others, but certainly whatever does happen, that leaves people dead over there will be shown by their television. I think we can count on that. Would, would you anticipate some spreading of any sort of conflict here? I think Pakistan is going to be seriously destabilized. You have to look at certain areas in the world. You look at North Africa, which is called the Maghreb. You have a huge collection of unemployed young people there, all Muslim. Look at Indonesia. You have another seething mass of people who are Muslim in poor economic condition. And look at Pakistan. Pakistan is already sliding sideways. Yeah, Pakistan's latest rhetoric is, uh, the latest rhetoric that we're getting out of the region is, is not exactly comforting. Is, th is this, is the information of all of this something that with President Bush we're watching in sp split screen now, uh, leaving on, for his next destination? Is, with, with Condi Rice there, it looks like, in fact, it is Condoleezza Rice as they board 
Marine One now. The president working toward this idea of a war here, and now we're getting word back from the region that, you know, you better look out. We'll we'll defend ourselves. How much of this is just is just yakety yak, and how much of it is supported by the populace? Well, it's payback time. Almost every major. Uh military dictatorship in the Islamic world has a problem with Islamic fundamentalists from Algeria to Indonesia to Malaysia. We're giving them free license to go after these people. Uh, the problem is each one of these regions has a secondary effect when you do that. When you militarize and go against these groups, there's going to be another blowback, just as the one we created in Afghanistan in the 80s. Uh, you mentioned another blowback in the area. Uh, there's there are so many suggesting that they wouldn't have started this if they didn't have plans for a second wave. Would you anticipate that strikes on the United States from what you know of this bunch are just beginning? No, there are still cells in the United States. They're terrified to come forward. They've obviously gone underground because the FBI is doing a good job in rooting them out. But this is just one of many attacks that have been carried out on this country since uh, the late 70s when the whole Islamic world got uh, militarized. Robert Young Pelton with us from Los Angeles, the author of The World's Most Dangerous Places. A very interesting read in these times. Uh, it is out there and about, but uh, hard to find, I might admit. Uh, Robert Young Pelton, thanks very much. Thank you.